Hey, John Waite here, partner at Martin and Gifford uh, in Winston-Salem, uh, general counsel to NC Realtors. And it is time, as it is time every year, to roll out the forms changes. This year is going to be an extra special year for the forms changes, given the new landscape that will be coming due to the MLS policy changes that will be going to affect, uh, you know, in early August, um, somewhere, somewhere around there. And... What we're going to do is do a, a video series for you guys, probably a whole slew of video series for you guys as far as forms and how to, uh, just the things to look out for. Um, for those of you who don't know, every single year when we do the forms changes, we release a summary of forms changes in the Q&A section of the ncrealtors.org website. So if you I have no idea what's going on here today. Don't worry. You can you can go. You can go to the website. Just go to the Q and A section, and right there, you're going to be able to see all the forms changes, including the document you got on my screen right now. What I have on my screen right now is Form 101, but it's not you know just the regular Form 101. It is the Form 101 that has all the strike throughs and the highlights and everything like that. If you go to the summary forms changes on the website and then click on the hyperlink, it will take you right to this document so that you can look at it for yourself, okay? So, when we are looking at this document here, we're gonna go right into Form 101, then we're gonna do Form 201, uh, 203, and um, then finally we're gonna finish off with Form 220, which has been redrafted, and as well as a small edit in Form 770. Um, so as we scroll down here through Form 101, you can see not a lot has changed on the first two pages. In fact, nothing has changed, otherwise it would be highlighted. And then we get down to page four, okay? And there were several things in the antitrust settlement that uh, required some changes to our forms. Mind you, however, um, the forms in North Carolina were already substantially in compliance with the settlement terms. So we didn't actually have to add or do that much. That said, um, there was a lot of debate. There was a lot of really thoughtful effort and energy put into uh, the forms committee by the volunteers that are in there. Uh, doing that job is a very difficult one. We thank them. Uh, all, the, all the people who volunteered uh, on forms committee, thank you for your service. We really appreciate your input on this. Um, this coming form cycle for this next year is going to be, um, it's going to be demanding uh, and it's going to be, uh, we are going to be receiving a lot of input. So if you guys have input to give, uh, feel free to send that input uh, to legal hotline at ncrealtors.org. Uh, we will forward that, those requests to the right area. We want to make sure that we are in tune with members th through this entire year to make sure the forms are being are, are going to be useful for the things you guys are going to encounter in practice. As for Form 101, the exclusive right to sell listing agreement for residential property, you can see in the middle of your screen here in green is one of the things that the settlement required, which is that the seller needs to give consent to any additional compensation. Okay, it, it's not something where it's going to be automatic. It is when you sign this contract with a seller, you are making an agreement for a certain amount of compensation. In order for that certain amount of compensation to change, there will need to be a separate written amendment. We're going to talk a little bit later uh, about exactly how to do that. But for right now, just understand that that's the case. So the standard language has been adjusted right here in paragraph 7E to accommodate that, as well as putting a note in here um, in bold, capitalized, the amount, format, or rate of real estate compensation is not fixed by law, but is set by each broker individually and is fully negotiable. Now, mind you, you're going to hear this a lot, so I apologize if this is a repeat already for you. But part of any negotiation is the answer no, okay? You, as firm, as an agent, you're going to put a value on your services, and certainly that value is negotiable however you see fit, transaction to transaction. But... This language here doesn't mean that you have to value your services lower than what you know that they're worth. Now, mind you, you have to do that in compliance with any trust laws, always. And that's always been the case. None of, nothing about that has actually changed. Um, so just understand that as long as, as you are 
you're acting in compliance with antitrust laws. You're not, you know, making agreements with other competitors in the marketplace. You're not excluding uh, uh, competitors from the marketplace. You aren't doing things to try and stifle competition or uh, harm consumers. Okay, all these things about antitrust law that you've learned over the years that has to be in compliance. And if you need further guidance about that, then by all means, make sure you seek legal counsel and get guidance about that. Each firm is going to do this probably a little bit different. But understand that as far as the settlement is concerned and as far as the things that are required in that, this language is required. So that is why uh, it is in here in the form. Um, it's not that much different than what you guys have been doing already. But it is here now in black and white to make sure that you have it, um, you know, for you know, your clients and to have that discussion if you need to. This change right here that's actually now in yellow. Seller understands the cooperative compensation not required. The seller has no obligation to authorize cooperative compensation. This part here that's not highlighted because it's not a change uh, actually is required in the settlement, but we just happen to have it already. Specifically, what this section does, it, and hopefully you're very familiar with it already. Um, I'm sure most of you are. But this section here, what it does is it, it the seller is agreeing to a certain amount of co cooperative compensation to be offered to other agents, if any. You know, it could be zero, it could be one, it could be you know whatever it is. Okay. Um, so that is going to continue to be in here. That's going to continue to be the case. There might be some. Uh, some of you that will need to amend some of your listing agents la later, look for guidance on that as we continue to go through um, the process with you know, figuring out what the MLS policies are, which you know we, it was just about a week and a half ago, I think, as of recording this video, <laughs> that we got uh, MLS policies released and the FAQ on those policies, and we're still digesting them. It may well be that you'll have to amend some listing agreements later, but you don't need to worry about that for right now. You're going to be in substantial compliance right now. As far as the changes in the forms uh, that are coming, that is really the thing that you have to be, maybe, that we can control and can learn about right now. In any event, so seller understands cooperative compensation is not required. Seller has no obligation to authorize that. This was an extra CYA the forms committee put in here based on just what we knew at the time about uh, the, the antitrust case in Missouri, but we didn't even have a settlement yet to even work on. So good job of the forms committee anticipating that. It's probably the language they would have added um, you know, once the settlement came out if it hadn't been agreed to already. Scrolling on down, you can see you know, no changes in these sections here as we keep going. And then we get down here to paragraph 11. This change here hopefully is going to be a, a, a good change to accommodate your practice. There's going to be a slight change to Form 2T that'll, that you'll learn more about later. But in Form 2T, there's been language added to allow the seller to direct the buyer how to pay the due diligence fee. So if there's, you know, more than one seller, you know, there's an estate, you know, you know, situations like that where the due diligence fee may not, it may not be real practical to make it out to every single seller as part of the transaction. Um, so that is going to be part of the offer to purchase contract as far as those changes there. What this section is here is this is your contract listing agent with the seller, right? And so what this change is meant to do is to give you that direction right here. Any due diligence fee paid, paid to seller or whoever. And sorry, right here, this line will continue down through here so you can add more names. Or, you know, if you really, if it's a really complicated situation, especially with the states and things like that, a bunch of estates and spouses or whatever, you can just put in here C attached and, and attach an addendum that says, you know, that you're going to pay it that way, okay? So just understand that, um, you know, that this is just something so that the listing agent gets direction from their seller. But then, you know, mind you, this document is not binding on the buyer whatsoever. So that means that you're going to have to make sure that whatever the seller directs you in this part here, that you get that and put that into the offer to purchase a contract when that time comes, which is true of a lot of parts of the listing agreement. So that's not terribly unusual. I am very confident you guys can handle it. All right, 
Scrolling on down, we got some changes here regarding wetlands, flood disclosure, um, and things of that nature. This is to give you some, you know, a little bit more detail in making those disclosures, or and more importantly, making sure the seller gives those disclosures to listing agents so that they can disclose them as material facts. Make sure as the listing agent you're not skipping over, you know, these sorts of sections. Uh, well, you shouldn't be skipping over any of the sections, okay? But in particular, let's not skip over the sections where you might need to learn material facts about the property and disclose them. Uh, this would be one of those sections. These changes are meant to make sure they can do those things, including water uh, repairing issues, creek buffers, wetlands, uh, things like that. Wetlands was addressed uh, throughout other forms as well, not just this one. Uh, so you'll see that, it, you know, as we, as more forms change videos come out, you will see uh, wetlands being discussed more and more. Um, it is a, 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 as far as the, the state association is concerned, it's a risk management issue. We want to make sure that you guys have the tools you need to be able to protect yourselves from allegations that you're not disclosing everything that you should. All right. Even though you know, we know, we know that well, sometimes you can do your best with a seller, and you're still not going to get all the information you need. But hopefully, having it in black and white will help you uh, get across the finish line more often than not. Or for those of you who are there, Bix, making sure that your agents uh, do that for you. All right. There's also uh, several changes throughout the forms having to do with relocation companies. This is one section. Uh, it's also in the buyer agency agreement that we're going to go over in a little bit here. Um, it's important to, to know these things so that you guys know that you may be dealing with a relocation company. You know, depending on the relocation company, that can be a, a real big deal. Um, some are better than others, uh, but in general, it, it's not that it's necessarily going to make your transaction easier to deal with. Not that that's a bad thing. You guys are getting paid to do a service. But at the same time, uh, it's good to know about it at the agency contract stage rather than later on down the line um, when it may become something that's a real big issue uh, that pops up right before closing. All right. As we keep going, we go down through Form 101. I'm trying to think. I don't think we have any other big changes. Nope. Doesn't look like it. All right. So that is the changes to Form 101. I will scroll down a little bit to Form 103 while I'm in this video and just because I'm here. It's just because you guys need to know that the same changes that are made to Form 101 are also down in here in 103 uh, to make sure that you guys are in compliance with the antitrust settlement agreement terms. That is true throughout all the agency agreements, even auction. You know, If you're over in that area, we even went in there. We tried to leave no stone unturned. Uh, granted, it had to be a very quick turnaround time, but we did our best to make sure that you guys, as far as the form is concerned, would have um, you know, compliance just by using the forms and not having to do anything extra or special or anything like that. All right. So thanks for going with me on this tour of the new Form 101. Um, uh, and I will move on again uh, to Form 201, the exclusive buyer agency agreement.